I want to talk about what I believe is a very simple and straightforward process to get wealthy. I am working on playing with an idea that basically says, screw getting rich, let's get wealthy. And I'm going to talk about this topic with several different experts, have them poke holes at it, have them tweak it, have them modify it, because this is something I think I'm going to put a lot of energy behind. And I want to have this conversation with the one and only Lumberjack Landlord. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing awesome. Glad to have you back and that you had a good trip. I did, man. So I want to lay out the three steps, kind of, mm -hmm. let me, I'm going to go for a couple of minutes. Sure. And I'm going to stop and have you poke holes at it. You so got again, it. this is about getting wealthy. I think okay. it's a three-step process. Step one is create dry powder. And I have plenty of examples how to do that. But the, the best examples is like Olivia and I, where we cut our expenses to the bone and we lived on 50% of income. Everything we didn't spend was dry powder. Mm -hmm. Dion. Uh, Casey, uh, you know, the single or the, the mom of three kids, sorry, not single mom, the mom with three kids. She created an Etsy shop to create side hustle income. Dion selling video game. I don't know, tchotchkes or whatever the heck they're called, right. Mm -hmm. To produce income. So, and you can do both, but step mm -hmm. one is take whatever position you're at and create dry powder because that mm -hmm. becomes the kindling for what comes next. So that's step one. Mm -hmm. Step two is pick your thing. You can't be all things. You're not going to get wealthy by being the master of everything. You're going to get wealthy by being coming the best or focused on one thing, right? Is it stocks? Is it crypto? Is it real estate? Is it single family? Is it commercial? Is it, you know, old cars? Is it trading? I don't care what it is, but go in, invest time in your thing. Mm -hmm. Create a disproportionate, I don't know, understanding of your market so you can operate where other people can't. And obviously you're taking the cash from step one and levering it up in step two. Mm -hmm. And then step three, time. You become wealthy by owning assets and hopefully in my world, cash flow producing assets that will allow you to have income snowball like Dion or like you and I have done, recycle capital and explode your business. Mm -hmm. But that is done with time. Yeah, I believe this three-step process to get wealthy could get anybody wealthy in 10 years if they're serious and they are focused. So I will leave that kind of in front of you. I will have you ask questions, poll Coles. I'll be silent. What do you think of that three-step process that anybody could follow to get wealthy? Yes. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, so, I mean, exactly, you know, what I did was, you know, I loved sports and I loved motorcycles. And so I was into sports trading cards. Um, me and Gary V, we memorized the Beckett, Beckett publications. We me memorized our Beckett monthly the day that it came out. And I was at trade shows that Saturday. And I was buying undervalued assets and I was, and then I would started literally like, okay, you want to nerd out? Okay. I, I would start doing the calculations based on the rarity of cards being pulled from boxes. And I could then handicap it to a certain degree about what that thing was going to be worth when it came out. And that's what a lot of the market was inefficient at doing. And so I could actually go out there. And I could buy stuff for 10, 15 and $20 that I thought would come out at 80. And then when it came out at 80, I could give somebody a great deal and sell it at 60. And that's what I did. And so that was baseball cards and I did it with motorcycles too. And so I think that the key to that is not going and chasing something that you know nothing about. Hmm. The oh, key to it is going and saying, what am I really into, you know? And it can be the fun thing for me and my son right now is matchbox cars. I don't need a $500 matchbox car, but we will go to yard sales and we will buy all the matchbox cars they have. And we'll say, we'll give you 15 bucks because I know it's going to take one trip down the track. Now, what does that mean? I have 50 years from now it means I probably have 3000 matchbox cars and who knows some of them might be worth something. doesn't matter, but that's, that's long tail. So I think the thing is, is you got to get into stuff that you really enjoy because you got to become the expert at it. You got to become a lead at it. You got to know, okay, it's this wheel variation on this car, or it's this variation of that card, 
or it's, you know, this bike with this serial number is important because it's a, it's a model extension as it were. So it's really that that's where life becomes really fun is you get amazing at something. You then really start to understand that market, just like with houses and it's great training. You know, you start to understand the market and then you go from less expensive things to more expensive things like homes. It's a natural extension. Yeah. And again, I, I really think this three-step process, anybody could do it. It works mm -hmm. for everyone. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, step three is real. It takes yeah. time. Oh, wealthy. Yeah. It, it takes a decade. What's wealthy? I think that's for, left for everybody to find, but I would say wealthy is the ability to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want. That's my definition. It's not a number. It's choice. It's freedom yeah. to choose. That's yeah. what I define as wealthy. I would say Dion's wealthy. Oh, for sure. At right? 16 units, that's amazing. Yeah. He's wealthy. Course. And yeah. I think that we're wealthy just in a different way. Yeah. We have we have bigger needs. Bigger <laughs> needs. Higher maintenance. Yeah. You know? Exactly. But, but, Dion, but that's, Dion's telling us he, he can't spend all this money. I'm like, Dion, you want to go rent a penthouse for 3500 bucks a day? We, ex we can fix that. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Part of his trip was staying in a youth hostel. Yeah, right, like, right. I'll stay at the penthouse just yeah. because I can. I was like, no, I don't think I'm staying at the youth hostel. I, I did those in Europe in my 20s. Um, That's kind of a hard pass for me. But I think that, I, so that's why I think wealthy is important, right? Some people think that a $1 million net worth is wealthy. Some people think a $5 million net worth is wealthy. And some people think a $50 million net worth isn't wealthy. Yeah, that's true. So I think that, I think it is, I think it is directly, directly related to kind of how people feel about money and what their plans are for their life. I know that I wanted to go to the point where it's like, I, I don't care. I don't care if we want to go on a trip. I don't care if we want to go stay in the nicest room. I don't care. You know, yeah. if I wanted to fly all first class, I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I, I, I think I'm really thinking about, I'm going to talk to more, more of my experts about this, but I think there's some energy behind it because I do think it's simple. I think it works for everyone. I think each step kind of feeds on itself and we are all great yeah. examples at one rental at a time of, of going through this. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, create dry powder. You can expand yes. your means or live below your means or do both. Become elite at something. Yes. Become focused, daily discipline. I don't care what it is. Yep. And then just do it for a decade. The, the other then thing you get too, choices. Yeah. The other thing too, I think people make mistakes of is they start in the very beginning trying to have it make money that funds a part of their lifestyle. No. And that's the mistake, you know? We just continue to reinvest the win. You know, I didn't you take a the, penny, a right? penny out of our portfolio until like year thirteen. We haven't. It's yeah. we're we're twenty years in, and I haven't taken yeah. a dime out of it to buy anything other than things for the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that you know, now the business is huge, and I'm very excited to start drawing off of it. Yeah, exactly. It is a good thing. Yeah, we, we the first thing we did is we did redid our kitchen. We you know we had the same kind of. I don't know what they are, four inch subway tiles or whatever they were for yeah. the model when moved in. So that was the first thing we did. It was nice to see. Now it's Mac Daddy, you know, Thermador, this and that. It's all it's all good. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, get, getting wealthy is it's where it's at. It's it's you know beats the alternative. Oh yeah. And I, I think mean, we have I think we can help people get there. It's just it's just those three steps with little variations, you know, dry powder. What does that mean? You know, live below your mean, expand your means, do both. Become a, I don't care what, like it could be rare motorcycles. It could be matchbox cars. I don't care what it is. Become a lead at something. And oh, by the way, if you become a lead at something into a recession, there will be people that, that expel toys. Oh yeah. Just because, right. They need cash. Yeah. And if you happen to be like us who raised cash at the perfect time at low rates, you know, thank oh. goodness for our refis, we're ready to go. Right. So it's going to be a lot of, fun I mean, thing. very ready. It's and, and we're already starting to see it. Like we've seen some little pockets, but there's things that we've, you know, looked at that we're going to delay purchase probably another couple quarters on, um, you know, just some, just some bigger uh, assets for the business. Um, but, you know, we look at it now and it's like a truck that I was looking at, you know, six months, 12 months, six to 12 months ago, 
was forty thousand dollars, and you know we're we're moving forward on something that's twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, this it's, the asset it's coming. The, the asset hasn't changed that much. It certainly hasn't deteriorated. You know, forty percent. Um, but this is going to be an asset that the business will use for 10 years. And quite frankly, saves us probably about $10,000 a year, this one piece. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, oper- the, the guys that prepared the guys that, you know, made sandbags, you know, the last two years, it's, it's going to start raining and it's coming. And then the last thing I want to hit on is again, you have to own them for 10 years. Uh, yeah. I'm seeing more and more stories about people that went nuts on Airbnb and specifically in Texas, like Austin. Yep. Sure. They're going to get hurt. They're, they're, they're yep. upside down. Right. If, yep. I, I read an article uh, about people who are buying in Austin, Texas, accepting negative cash flow. I'm like, yes. what are you doing? It's like rule number one, no alligators. Uh, and that's going to create an inventory problem. People are going to lose some, lose some money. You don't do that. You don't bet on appreciation. The key to getting wealthy is you have to hold the asset for 10 years. Fixed rate debt, cash flow day one. Don't over leverage. Don't create alligators with refis. You got to hold it for 10 years. I mean, I, I don't, it, it drives me crazy that people try to shortcut it with max leverage mm. and then they get wiped out. Well, I mean, that's what's going to happen. You know, when you start accounting for rental appreciation in your in your figuring of an asset, when you start counting for market appreciation in your asset, most of these investors haven't been investing for, you know, 20 years. Forget about 20, try 10. Yeah. And when they and when they've been doing it for five, they've only ever seen the greatest market that we've ever seen in the history of time. And so we'll start seeing how some of those deals get unwound. And we'll start seeing when, you know, evictions go up to you know, seven or eight or ten percent from a vacancy perspective. You know, can you weather that storm? And you know, I think that that's this that's the type of stuff that people are going to get hurt with. And I think that, um, I think that speed kills. Yeah, I think that speed kills. Slow and steady wins the race. You know, there's parts where you can speed up within the game, um, but. It it can't be, I always tell my guys, if we always lived our lives in sixth gear, yeah, we're eventually going to get tired and we're going to burn out and we're going to flame out. And so I always say, it's not bad to be at just kind of a cruising speed, you know, in fourth gear and just, you know, just relaxing as we take, and we still have two gears that we can shift into to, to, to get things, you know, to, to as we get higher speed. So I think too often people are saying, well, I have this goal for next year. That's why I'm not a huge goal guy. Well, I want to do a hundred, a hundred units by next year. I don't want to do a hundred bad deals by next year to get a hundred yeah. units. I, my, my process is very simple. I want to do the next great deal. Now, my job is to look every day, daily discipline. My job is to have a buy box, understand what the market is and what it's doing. My understanding is to have a rent box. So I understand that once I buy the asset, what is ex- what exactly is it renting for? And can I pay more? Because everyone else in the calculation is making a bad calculation based on what they rent things out for, not what actual market is. That's where the rent box can change things and change what the asset may be worth. But if you start to look at it that way and start to understand that this is a long tail approach, it's it's one that over a decade, it's pretty hard to lose, even when real estate goes down, because rents don't go down aggressively, except for in high A class properties like we've been talking about. Yeah. So again, folks, there's something here. Uh, I think we're going to spend some time at one rental at a time talking about getting wealthy. We want to see you get there. Again, you got to create dry powder, become a lead at something, and then it's a 10-year journey. I hope you all follow it. Let us know. Leave some comments below what you think of these three steps. Matt, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on Instagram and live streams Sunday at 1130 a.m. Eastern time. And what is it, two weeks from now? Yep. We're we're doing our event. Yeah, the 21st, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 21st. So excited to do that event with you guys and the four of us on a Zoom for three hours. Pretty well. We'll actually make that topic number two. Thanks, buddy. Thanks.